So the Los Angeles Lakers did it again. They won another game, this time against the New Orleans Pelicans, who were close seating-wise to them, which is a big, big win. This was basically a must-win. They were up 35 at halftime. Absolutely crazy. Malik Beasley had, I think, 21 at halftime. Anthony Davis had somewhere around there as well. It was great games, basically, all around. They beat the Pelicans by 15. The Pelicans kind of made a run back, but the Lakers didn't end up losing it or anything like that. So, pretty remarkable stuff there. They've won quite a few games in a row now. Um, Well, not in a row, but like, uh, I don't know how you'd say it. Not in a row, but they've been on a streak of winning games, I guess you could say, where they lost... The last one against the Knicks, but before that, I think they're on a three-game winning streak or so. Um, I'm trying to pull it up right now to find it. So, they won against the Pelicans today. Then they lost to the Knicks before that. And before that, they're on a three-game winning streak before they lost the last one. So, I think they've lost three or four games since the All-Star break, something like that. Like, they've barely really lost, which has been very good for them. Um, I can't find it. When was the All-Star break? Oh, it was the... Okay, so they won, they've they lost three games. Yeah, three games and have won... How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven and three since All-Star break. That's great. That's absolutely great. So, with D'Angelo Russell giving them, what, 15 points per game right now? Very impressive. Like, let's let's go to their roster. Let's go to their roster and look at what people are giving them. So right now they are starting at the point guard, D'Angelo Russell. He's going to be the starter in the playoffs. He is giving them, in the, the six games he's played for them, 19 points per game. I expect it to fall to around maybe 17, 15 to 17 when LeBron is back. Now their shooting guard has been Malik Beasley. We could see that switch up to Austin Reeves, but as now as of now it's Malik Beasley. He's played 12 games for them, 11.5 points per game. His three-point percentage has been 32.5%, which is bad. Way worse than his career average. But he made like 10 threes. Not 10. He made like eight threes for the Lakers against the Pelicans. So really good bounce back game for him. Obviously, the small forward would be LeBron James. So uh, this season, he's averaging 29.5 points per game. I expect that to drop if he comes back this regular season. We don't know if he will, though. Then they'll start Jared Vanderbilt at the power forward. He'll give him like eight points per night or maybe even less than that, to be honest. He's mainly just on the court because of his defensive capabilities. But right now he is averaging eight points per game. I don't expect that to fall too much, maybe seven points per game. I don't think he'll fall down to six. Then Anthony Davis has been 26 points per game this season. I expect that to stay relatively the same. Like I'm talking about coming playoffs. That'll stay basically the same. Now Dennis Schroeder is going to get minutes in the playoffs. 13 a game. That's a, maybe a little on the higher end, but not too high. Uh, Troy Brown Jr., 7 points per game. Yeah, he'll probably give you that on a nightly basis in the playoffs. Austin Reeves will get minutes, 11 points per game. I actually expect his numbers to potentially go up in the playoffs because I think they will play him quite a bit. And then Scotty Pippen Jr., Cole Swider, Devon Reed, even Lonnie Walker, those and Wenyan Gabriel, those guys probably aren't getting minutes. Mo Bamba's probably not getting a ton of minutes. Max Christie's not. So really, I would say D'Lo, Jared Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley, Rui Hachimura, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Austin Reeves, Dennis Schroeder, and Troy Brown Jr. are your nine that are you, you're really going to play. Uh, I don't know if that's how big of a rotation you'd run, but I'm assuming Rui's going to get minutes. I'm assuming Troy Brown Jr. is going to get minutes. Maybe Troy's get cut, but Rui's averaging 12 points per game this season overall. For the Lakers, it's a little bit less, I believe. He had 10.5, but had 12 points tonight. So he is starting to pick it up over the past, like, five, six games. He's been playing really well for him. So this team come playoffs, I think, will be a title contender if they are able to... If they are able to stay healthy. That is the big thing, right? So D'Lo fits perfectly with this team. I love D'Lo's fit. I think that... A lot of people were saying Malik Beasley or Jared Vanderbilt was the biggest thing for the Lakers. I think it is on a nightly basis because I would say consistently it is either Jared Vanderbilt defensively or it is 
D'Lo because the D'Lo Anthony Davis connection is actually pretty good. I think it's kind of what people expected the Russell Westbrook Anthony Davis connection to be. That never ended up happening. So really, D'Lo likes to have the ball in his hands and he plays quite well, honestly, with the ball outside of his hands and him moving around and getting it, shooting wide open threes. He shot great for the Lakers, but when he has the ball in his hands, Anthony Davis sets him a screen at the top of the wing. D'Lo loves that floater. D'Lo can get to the basket. He dishes the ball. He passes quite well. Uh, can even throw that little floater lob to AD if it's open. Teams haven't really been leaving it open too often because they know it's Anthony Davis. Um, Anthony Davis hasn't really been getting the best looks. He had an extremely good game this past game for the Lakers where he put up, what, th- was it 36 or something wild like that? He put up a ton of points. I'm looking it up right now. He had 35 and 17 rebounds, no blocks, which is actually surprising. He did have one block after after a foul that would like it didn't count obviously because a field goal doesn't count if you miss it when you're fouled. So, really he had one, but yeah, that was it. Um and then when LeBron is back, I think you're going to see a lot of D'Lo playing off ball obviously because LeBron has the ball in his hands a lot, but I think that could work out well because if LeBron needs to take a playoff, which we do see him do at certain times, he'll like take a playoff. D'Lo's running the offense. It's not Dennis Schroeder running the offense. It's not Russell Westbrook running the offense. It's not Anthony Davis running the offense. Yes, you get the ball into Anthony Davis. It's a good thing. I'm just saying from the top of the paint, I don't love it because Anthony Davis ten, tends to take that mid-range pull-up, which doesn't always go in. It's um, Either he's completely on from that mid-range or he is completely off, so... I don't totally love that, but D'Lo running that offense, I definitely do. Now, even Austin Reeves runs it better than Dennis Schroeder. I'm honestly not the biggest Dennis Schroeder guy, but I think that he has moments where he's a good player. Same with Troy Brown, kind of. I think Troy Brown never is really a negative, but he can be a positive. So I do think Troy Brown is deserving of minutes, but I could see them getting stripped. Rui has been picking it up really, really well recently. And then Jared Vanderbilt. Offensively, I actually like his game. I know he can't really shoot except for those corner threes. He'll knock every knock down every once in a while. But all in all, like he's in the right spot at the right time. Most times he's in that little dunker spot. He's in the short corner. Whatever. He gets a ton of rebounds. He's like a big piece of that team. Let's see. He had four points tonight. But I'm I would not say it was a bad game for him because he had eight rebounds. He had three assists. He had one steal. He had zero blocks. Okay, yeah, that's a bad game for Jared, Jared Vanderbilt. I do take that back. He did shoot one from. He only shot one field goal, or he only made one. One for four, zero oh for two from three. That's a bad game for Jared Vanderbilt. I won't lie. They won the game that was against the Pelicans. I believe he guarded Brandon Ingram. I believe he did, and Brandon Ingram was held to twenty-two points. I would say that's a win. If he didn't guard Brandon Ingram, he probably guarded C.J. McCollum, and C.J. had thirteen points. So. Big win. The leading scorer for the Pelicans was Brandon Ingram with 22. Trey Murphy had 20, and Herb Jones had 20. No one had more than 22 points. That's a good way to win if you're the Lakers because they had 35 from AD, 24 from Beasley, 17 from Russell, and 14 from Reeves, and 12 from Rui. So they had, obviously, top-heavy scoring from from AD, but they also had bench scoring where, like I said, Reeves had 14 and Hachibura had 12. Uh, Reeves kind of got a lot more minutes than Schroeder tonight, got about 10 more minutes than Schroeder, which definitely helped. Uh, Like I said, not good in the second half. The Lakers weren't that good in the second half. We're trying to basically see how little they could play with still winning that game, it felt like. Now, the Pelicans had nobody score more than seven off the bench. So that was another big piece of their uh, their losses or their, their losing. Uh, Turnover-wise, Pelicans had 12 and the Lakers had 17. They were pretty sloppy in that second half, and I think that's probably where most of those turnovers came from. Um, but, yeah, I would, I would say in all, the Lakers played – pretty dang good for that first half like as best as we've seen them this team just feels like the 2020 bubble lakers and that is why i love this team so much it's just because they are so fun to watch it seems like they play their hardest all the time 
And I really do think that this team is a title contender. And I really want to know your guys' thoughts on it in the comment section below. Definitely don't forget to leave a like, though. Subscribe. Turn notification bells to all. Let me know your favorite team thing about this team. And just something else, like a minute detail that I haven't mentioned in this video. But that's it. See you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for watching. And peace out.